Good afternoon. My name is Stacy Griffin, and today we will be rediscussing the verification process, which is required of all school systems utilizing free and reduced price applications. There are areas applicable for all SFA types. However, the majority of verification activities revolve around those FSAs who utilize free and reduced price meal applications. So what is verification? Verification is the process of confirming that applications submitted for participation in NSLP were eligible under the Income Eligibility Guidelines, Section 9B3 of the National School Lunch Act and regulations at 7 CFR 245.6AC1, established requirements for LEAs in conducting verification of eligibility for free and reduced price meals based on applications in participating schools. Verification is only required when eligibility is determined through the application process and is not required for eligibility determinations made through the direct certification process. Verification must include either a confirmation of the family's income eligibility or confirmation that the child is otherwise categorically eligible for, for participation. Verification may also include confirmation of any other information required on the application, such as household size. Another thing to note is that not all applications are required to be verified. It is a percentage of applications. We will discuss the methods for selecting applications on a later slide. At or near the beginning of the year, SFAs will collect eligibility in two ways, through direct certification matches and through household applications. Starting October 1st, count all of the applications certified at face value that did not match on direct certification. Applications that were submitted and found through direct certification are not eligible for verification. Use this total to calculate how many applications you would need to verify. You have until November 15th to verify these applications. November 15th through January 10th is the timeline to report the results of verification on the verification summary form. All SFAs, regardless of their type, are required to report their results because it includes additional information used by USDA, such as enrollment, identify students, and the number of operating sites per SFA. The complete verification process of free and reduced price applications is required by any participating school who uses free and reduced applications and by RCCIs with day students. Partial CEP districts will have to complete the entire verification process on those schools who are not CEP. System-wide CEPs and RCCIs without day students are not required to complete verification, but are required to complete the verification summary form. Next, we will discuss the collection officials that are reported for all SFAs on the online CNP applications. There are four types of collection officials. One, determining official. Two, pre-verifying, otherwise known as confirming official. Three, verifying official. And four, hearing official. Let's discuss the duties of each of these officials. The determining official determines eligibility status of all free and reduced applications using the information provided on applications. They will sign all applications as they process them. The determining official may not be the pre-verifying or confirming official who will conduct a second level review of all applications selected for verification. The determining official is responsible for school use only section of application 
which will be, will be discussed on later slides. Larger SFAs may have multiple people designated for the determining official role. Many schools will allow the manager for each school to be the determining official for all applications coming in to that school. The determining official or officials determine free or reduced price status by checking to make sure the application is complete, following up on applications with missing information, any missing or additional information provided to the, the determining official should be documented on the application in a different color ink and initial and dated by the person who collected the information. Calculating and or evaluating the application for eligibility. Assigning and recording free and reduced status on each application or batch sheet. The determining official must sign each application or batch sheet after the eligibility determination is made. Next, we will discuss the pre-verifying official. The pre-verifying or confirming official will only verify applications that are selected for verification. They do not need to confirm the status eligibility of all applications as the determining official does. When applications are pulled for verification, the pre-verifying official will first check the application to confirm that the status was appropriately determined. This person may not be the determining official. However, the pre-verifying official can be reported as a software program that has the ability to check and approve applications. Collection officials are recorded annually in the CNP online application. The next type of collection official is the pre-verifying official. This person will be responsible for the overall verification process from October 1st through November 15th. This person will be responsible for the selection process, notifying households of selection, following up with households, reviewing all documentation submitted by households, and notifying households of the results of verification. Please note that the verifying official can be the determining official or the pre-verifying official. Only the determining and pre-verifying officials cannot be the same person. A point to remember is that only applications selected for verification require a signature from the pre-verifying, confirming official, and the verifying official. However, all applications or batch of applications require a signature from the determining official. The hearing official is responsible for reviewing a household's challenge of a status determination. This person should otherwise be independent of any activity involved in the application, approval, and verification process. Often, a superintendent, business manager, or child welfare advocate will fill the role of a hearing official. Now, we will discuss the steps to verification. Here is an overview of the steps involved. First, you will select the sample pool as of the number of applications on file on October 1st. Second, you will establish the sample size. The sample size must be based on the October 1st sample pool. Third, the pre-verifying official will conduct a confirmation review of all applications selected for verification. Next, you will begin verifying the selected applications in writing. And lastly, you will submit your results on the verification summary form, which is due on or before January 10th. 
Let's take a look at these steps in more detail. Step number one. The sample pool uses the total number of approved applications on file as of October 1st. Note, if, if it falls on a weekend, you're going to use the next operating day of the current school year. Like this year, October 1st is on a Sunday, so you will use October 2nd, which is that Monday. The sample pool depends on the number of approved applications, including paper and electronic applications. The sample pool is not based on the number of children eligible for free and reduced price benefits, as some eligible students will have established eligibility through the direct certification process and will not have an application on file. In addition, the sample pool does not include applications where all children in the household are determined eligible based on documentation provided by the state or local agency responsible for the administration of SNAP, FDPIR, TANF, or Medicaid, or applications where all children in the household are determined to be foster, homeless, migrant, or runaway children. Who is subject to verification? Those households with a free or reduced price approved application on file as of October 1st are subject to verification, including income applications, free income, reduced price income, SNAP applications, such as foster child applications. In some cases, students are determined free based on agency documents, not a free or reduced application, and therefore are not subject to verification. Children who have been certified under direct certification and their siblings at any point in the current school year are not subject to verification. Children in RCCIs except for day students, are not subject to verification. Foster children that are directly certified, documentation was provided from DCFS to school or the central office with no HH involvement, are not subject to verification. Children deemed homeless, migrant, or runaway by the appropriate official are not subject to verification. Children enrolled in a Head Start or Even Start program are not subject to verification. If the child is categorically eligible under DC, foster, homeless, migrant, or runaway by agency records and the parent submitted an application, the application is not subject to verification. Categorical free eligi eligibility supersedes the application. Denied or paid applications are also not subject to verification. Step number two, establishing the sample size. Once the sample pool is determined, the local educational agency, LEA, calculates the sample size or the number of applications that must be verified. When calculating the sample size, all fractions of decimals are rounded upward to the nearest whole number. At least one application must always be verified. With the exception of verification for cause, LEAs must not verify more or less than the standard sample size or the alternate sample size when the alternate sample size is used. The standard size must be used by an LEA unless the LEA qualifies to use an alternate sample size. The standard sample size is equal to the lesser of 3% of all applications approved by the LEA for the school year 
as of October 1st of the school year. Selected from error-prone applications or 3,000 error-prone applications approved by the LEA for the school year as of October 1st of the school year. Error-prone applications are those applications with an income listed within $100 a month, $1,200 a year, above or below the free eligibility limit or $100 per month, $1,200 per year, below reduced price eligibility limit. The determining official should flag all error-prone app applications during the approval process. In cases where there are not enough error-prone applications to comply with the required sample options, SFAs must randomly select additional applications to fulfill the 3% requirement. Let's look at an, at an example. You have 210 approved applications on file as of October 1st. How many applications would you need to verify? By what date? And what type of applications must you select? You have 210 approved applications on file as of October 1st. 210 times 3% equals 6.3 or seven applications. Remember to always round up to the nearest whole number. You will need to verify seven applications by November 15th. These seven applications must be selected from error prone applications. If you have only six error prone applications, the seven is selected randomly from the rest of the applications. If you have eight error prone applications, you must randomly select and verify seven of them. In the case that your school system had less than a 20% non-response rate in school year 2022, the alternate one or random method is an option. The alternate one sample size is the lesser of 3% of all applications approved by the LEA for the school year as of October 1st of the school year, selected at random or 3,000 applications approved by the LEA for the school year as of October 1st of the school year, selected at random. With the random method, Error-prone applications are not identified for verification select selection as done in the basic or standard method. Let's take a look at an example using the alternate one or random method. You have 75 approved applications as of October 1st. How many applications would need to be pulled for verification? By what date will you need to pull and verify all applications? And what type of applications will you need to pull? For 75 approved applications as of October 1st, random selection will be used to get the applications required for verification by November 15th. The math used to get this number is 75 times 3% equals 2.25 or three applications. Again, please remember to always round up to the nearest whole number. Also note that these applications are randomly selected without regard to error prone status. Now we will discuss the last method of selecting your sample size. Again, if your site had less than a 20% non-response rate in the prior school year, you are eligible to use this method. For the alternate two method, your sample size will equal the lesser of the sum of either 1,000 of all applications approved by the LEA as of October 1st of the school year selected from error-prone applications or 1% of all applications approved by the LEA as of October 1st of the school year, selected from error-prone applications. 
plus the lesser of 5,400 applications approved by the LEA as of October 1st of the school year, which provide case numbers in lieu of income information, or one half of 1% of applications approved by the LEA as of October 1st of the school year that provide case numbers in lieu of income information. Now, let's discuss an example using the alternate to or focus method. You have 245 applications on file as of October 1st, with 60 of the 245 being SNAP applications. How many SNAP applications do you need to verify? How many error-prone applications do you need to verify? And by what date? We will complete this example in two steps. First, we will calculate how many error-prone applications we need to verify by multiplying our total number of applications by 1%. 245 multiplied by 1% is equal to 2.45 or three applications. These three applications will be pulled from error-prone applications. Next, we will calculate the number of SNAP applications we need to verify. We will multiply the number of SNAP applications on file. Remember that these applications have SNAP numbers that were not found on the direct certification SNAP list. You will multiply that by 3%. So in this case, we have 60 SNAP applications multiplied by 1%, which is equal to 0.3 rounded up to one application. In this example, we will verify a total of four applications, three selected at random from error prone and one selected at random from SNAP applications. Let's review which method you can use for selecting your sample size. We use the previous school year's non-response rates to determine the method you will use for verification in the current school year. If you have a less than 20% non-response rate in the previous school year, you may use any method for verification, the standard or basic, alternate one or alternate two. However, if your non-response rate was 20% or greater in the previous school year, or if you didn't conduct verification in the previous school year, such as a new SFA or an SFA that has just started reusing applications, then you will need to use the basic or standard method. Please reference memo SFS 23-146. What is a non-response rate? The non-response rate is the percentage of approved household applications with no response to the request for verification information. So we know that any SFA with a non-response rate of less than 20% is eligible to use one of these alternate methods. However, there is also the option to use an alternate method for any SFA with an improved non-response rate. This is specific, specifically for SFAs who, with more than 20,000 children approved by applications as eligible as of October 1st of the school year. These FS, SFAs may use an alternate sample size for any school year when its non-response rate for the preceding school year was at least 10% below the non-response rate for the second preceding school year. If you have any questions about this qualification for use of an alternate method, please contact the state agency. Let's complete an example of calculating a non-response rate. In 2021, you select seven applications for verification. You, you receive responses from three. What is your non-response rate for the 2022-2023 school year? And which method or methods will you be eligible for in 2023-2024? If you divide the number of non-responders by the number of total applications selected for verification 
and multiply it by 100, you would get your non-response rate percentage. In this case, we have four non-responders out of seven total applications. Four divided by seven times 100 is 57.14% non-response rate. In this case, since the non-response rate is greater than 20%, we will need to use the standard or basic method. Apart from the required verification of a specified number of approved applications regulations as 7 CFR 245.68AC7 require LEAs to verify any questionable application, including on a case-by-case -case basis. Verifying any application for cost when the LEA is aware of additional income or persons in the household. This is known as verification for cause. Determining officials are strongly encouraged to contact the household to clarify any information that is unclear or questionable before certifying the application and proceeding with verification for cause. Once households have been requested pr to provide documentation for cause, the LEA must complete the verification process for these households. Verification for cause cannot delay the approval of applications and LEAs can begin the verification process only after determination of eligibility has been made. If an application is complete and indicated that child is eligible for free or reduced price benefits, the application must be approved while the LEA begins verification for cause. When conducting verification for cause, the LEA verifies application for cause following the standard verification procedures described in this presentation. After completing the confirmation review, the LEA may, on a case-by-case -case basis, replace up to 5% of applications selected. Applications may be replaced when the LEA believes the household will be unable to satisfactorily respond to the verification request. If 5% of total application in the LEA results in less than one application total, one application may still be replaced. All results of the 5% calculation are rounded up to the next whole number. Any application removed must be replaced with another approved application selected on the same basis. For example, an error-prone application must be substituted for a withdrawn error-prone application. The newly selected application must then have a confirmation review. When an application is selected for verification and Prior to hearing back from the household in question, that household is found on a direct certification list. The application does not have to be replaced in the verification sample pool. The application will be marked as direct certification in the appropriate box in Section 3 of the FNS 742, which is the verification summary form. Then the application should be included in field 5-5, the number of applications being selected for verification on the FNS 742 and indicate the number of these applications that are being converted to direct certification in the remarks option portion. I'm sorry. Prior to any other verification activity, a determining official must review each approved application selected for verification to ensure the initial determination was accurate. Any LEA that conducts a confirmation review of all applications at the time of certification is not required to conduct a confirmation review prior to verification. The confirmation review must be done by an individual other than the individual who made the initial eligibility determination. This requirement is waived if the LEA uses a technology-based system with a high level of accuracy 
in processing an initial eligibility determination. The LEA must receive approval through their online CMP application, where they submit their software system as the confirming official. If the state agency determines that the technology-based system is inadequate, it may require the LEA to conduct a confirmation review of each application selected for verification. After the confirming official has completed a confirmation review of each application selected for verification, they then sign the application or sign a cover letter to attach to the review application. This is done prior to contacting households. Here is an overview of the LEA's responsibilities following a status change as a result of a confirmation review. We will discuss procedures if there is no change in status, a status change from reduced price to free, a status change from free to reduced price, or if there is a status change from free or reduced price to paid on the following slides. Step three, responsibilities following a status change, free or reduced to paid. If the initial determination of the application is incorrect and status is changed to pay, the SFA must immediately send the household a notice of adverse action, not verify the application, select a similar application for confirmation and verification, follow the confirmation review procedures for the newly selected application. If the initial determination of the application is incorrect and status is changed from free to reduce, the SFA must not correct the household's eligibility status and proceed with verification of this application. If the initial determination of the application is incorrect and status is changed from reduce to free, the SFA must correct the household's eligibility status, notify the household of the change in benefits, proceed with verification of this application. If the initial determination of the application is correct, the initial determination of the application is correct, the SFA proceeds with verification. Step four, begin verifying the selected applications. Once selection procedures are complete, the LAA proceeds with household notification. Requirements for the household notification of selection for verification are included at 7 CFR 245.6 AF. When a household is selected for verification, the LEA must inform the household in writing of its selection and must provide a list of the documents or other forms of evidence the household must submit to the LEA. When the LEA uses agency records or direct verification to confirm eligibility, a letter or email informing the household of this selection for verification is not required as verification is complete. SFAs are encouraged to use the prototype verification form on the CMP website found under forms in order to ensure that all required areas are included in the notification. The household notification letter must include the following, an indication that the household was selected for verification, a modified use of information statement, which can be found on our prototype form. The full USDA non-discrimination statement. If a child is receiving benefits based on income, a list of the types of acceptable information that may, may be provided to confirm the current income, such as pay stubs, 
award letters from assistant agencies for benefits such as Social Security or SSI or support payment decrees from court. If a child is receiving benefits based on categorically eligible eligibility and indication the household may provide proof that a child or any household member is receiving benefits under an assistance program or that a child is other source categorically eligible instead of providing income information. A warning that information must be provided by a date specified by the LEA and their failure to do so will result in termination of benefits. A notice that documentation of income or receipt of assistance may be provided from any point in time between the month prior to application and the time the household is required to provide the income documentation. The name of a determining official who can answer questions and provide assistance and a telephone number the household can call at no cost for assistance. So what is direct verification? 7 CFR 245.6AG permits LEA to directly verify approved applications selected for verification. Direct verification involves using public records from public agencies to verify household income or household participation in an eligible program, helping relieve families of additional paperwork and reducing the gap in meal benefits for ch eligible children resulting from non-response. Direct verification may be completed at the state or local level or through a joint effort at both levels. LEAs are required to conduct direct certification but are not required to conduct direct verification. Direct verification must be conducted prior to contacting the households for documentation. If a household is selected for verification and then later found on the October direct certification match, the application is directly verified and no additional verification is required. The directly verified applications will be reported on the online summary form. Please note, directly verified applications do not need to be replaced. The National School Lunch Act requires LEAs to conduct verification follow-up activities. To continue the verification process after household notification, the LEA must either determine if the household has submitted adequate information to complete its individual verification activity or if follow-up with the household is needed. The LEA must make at least one attempt to contact the household when the household does not adequately respond to the request for verification. Non-responders include no response and incomplete or ambiguous responses that do not permit the LEA to resolve children's eligibility for free and reduced price meals. The required follow-up attempt may be in writing, by mail or email, or by telephone or text message the LEA must document contact was attempted. Additionally, the LEA must ensure limited English proficiency households are provided adequate language assistance and understand the needs to respond to the verification request. When following up with households, the LEA must inform the household that failure to provide adequate written evidence or failure to designate an adequate collateral contact will result in termination of benefits. The LEA must attempt to obtain the missing written evidence or collateral contact information, and they must contact the household to complete the verification process. If the collateral contact is unwilling or unable to provide the requested information, we will discuss more about collateral contacts on the next slide. A collateral contact is a person outside of the household who is knowledgeable about the household circumstances and can confirm a household's income level or participation in an assistance program or other source categorically eligible programs. 
collateral contacts include employers, social service agencies, migrant workers, agencies, and religious or civic organizations. The verifying official should request a collateral contact only in cases when the household has not been able to provide adequate written evidence. Here are examples of acceptable written evidence. Income eligibility that contains the name of the household member, amount of income received, frequency received, and the date the income was received. For example, a pay stub with no dates would be insufficient. Categorical eligibility from an assistance program that contains an official letter or notice indicating that the child or any household member is receiving benefits from that program, such as a notice of eligibility or a document from an assistance program that does not specify the certification period does not meet the documentation for verification. For example, the identification cards for SNAP or TANF would be insufficient because they usually do not have an expiration date or categorical eligibility from another, another source that contains an official letter, notice, or list from the appropriate state agency, social service agency, program office, or coordinator, or court. When, when is verification considered complete? Verification is considered complete when the household submits adequate written evidence that results in no change in status. At this point, verification is considered complete for this household. The household submits adequate written evidence, which indicates that the children should receive either a greater or lesser level of benefits. Verification is considered complete for this household when the notice of adverse action is sent or household is notified that its benefits will be increased or decreased. The household indicates verbally or in writing that it no longer wishes to receive free or reduced price benefits. Verification is considered complete when the notice of adverse action is sent or the application provided case numbers and it is determined that no household member is receiving benefits from an assistance program. Verification in this instance is considered complete when the notice of adverse action is sent. If verification results in increased benefits, this change is effective immediately and must be implemented no later than three operating days from the time of the new determination. If verification results in decreased or terminated benefits, the household must be given 10 calendar days written advance notice of the change. The first day of the 10 calendar day advance notice is the day the notice is sent. Here is an overview of verification result timeline. If verification results in decreased or terminated benefits, the household must be given 10 calendar day written advance notice of the change. The first day of the 10 calendar day advance notice is the day the notice is sent. If the household does not request a hearing during the 10 calendar days, the reduction or termination of benefits must take place no later than 10 operating days after the 10 calendar day advance notice. However, if the household requests a hearing during the 10 calendar days, the SFA must continue to provide benefits for which the child was, ori was originally approved until a hearing is held and a final determination made. From here, if the hearing official rules that benefits must be reduced, this must take place within 10 operating days after the hearing official renders the decision, or if the hearing official rules that benefits must be increased, this must take place within three operating days after the hearing official renders the decision. If you ever have a question about verification results, please contact the state agency for assistance.
When a notice of adverse action is issued, the notice shall advise the household of the change, the reason for the change, notification of the right to appeal, and when the appeal must be filed to ensure continued benefits while awaiting a hearing and decision, instructions on how to appeal, and the right to reapply at any time during the school year. The FNS 742 verification report has five separate sections. Please note that all SFAs participating in the NSLP and SVP, including RCCIs that did not conduct verification, must complete specific sections of this report. Previously, RCCIs were exempt from this report. In addition, schools utilizing the Community Eligibility Provision, or CEP, must complete applicable portions of the form. Results are due annually by January 10th. This is a screenshot of the verification summary form on the CMP website. We will cover this form in more detail in the upcoming Verification Summary Form training. So now we will go over some frequently asked questions. Is the LEA required to provide a no-cost telephone option even if no households live outside the local calling area? Yes. The LEA is not required to have a toll-free number, but parents and guardians must be able to call COLLECT, which is 7 CFR 245.6 AF5. This helps to ensure parents and guardians can contact the LEA during the LEA's operating hours if they work outside the local calling area. What if the LEA is using other agency records to verify applications and the agency does not respond before the November 15th deadline? The LEA should document its attempt to contact the appropriate agency in advance of the November 15th deadline. This would demonstrate good faith and would be a valid reason for the state agency to extend the deadline. A household voluntarily provides pay stubs that conflict with the income information on the household's application. According to the application, the household is eligible for free meals, but according to the pay stub, it appears the household is not eligible. What should the determining official do? Under these circumstances, the LEA official must take appropriate action by either sending the household a notice of approval and a notice of adverse action at the same time, giving the household an opportunity to, re to resolve the discrepancy during and a verification letter, I'm sorry, during the advance notice of adverse action, sending the household a notice of approval and a verification letter based on verification for cause at the same time. LEA officials are in the best position to determine which action is appropriate. Regardless of the action taken, the inconsistency must be resolved expeditiously. How is overtime income counted for the purpose of verification? The LEA should work with the household to determine whether overtime during the verification month is representative of overtime worked in other months. If the overtime is a rare or sporadic source of income, the household's income should be calculated on the regular monthly income without the overtime. If a household is paid weekly and submits a pay stub for a week, must the LEA request pay stubs for a whole month? If the weekly pay stub is representative of the household's regular weekly income, one pay stub is sufficient. What if an application is selected for verification, but the household transfers out of the school district before the information can be verified? 
If a household selected for verification transfer out of a school district before the information can be verified, verification cannot be completed. To meet minimum verification requirements, a new application must be selected. This concludes the verification training. And as always, if you have any questions, you may contact the state agency at 225-342-9661 or email childnutritionprogram at la.gov. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.